Hey guys, and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. I'm Kart, and we're here in the Organ Grinders Morgue, where we are supposed to find out what killed Sam Watts, my friend and former ally. The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty fake fresh of industrial grade antiseptic. Dressed in the corner. I'm guessing that's Sam on the table there. Or maybe there. We'll have to see. Hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf, whistling a tune. His broad grin says I love my job a little more than you'd want or expect from someone in a chop shop trade. As you approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. There's something kindly in his eyes, though it might be just a stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. Sorry, didn't expect any visitors at this hour. And some asshole at corporate took my receptionist. What can I do for you, sir? Are you the coroner? I'm John Dresden, the Oregon Grinders branch manager here. So yeah, that makes me this franchise area's corner too. And you are? Hmm. Court. I represent a man named Sam Watts and I'm here to look into his murder. He frowns. Interesting. A dead man makes for a strange client, but what makes you think he's here? Sam had a locator chip and better in the skull. I followed it here. I see. Well, you're right, he's here. Not too many people know about the murder yet, though. The press haven't come to widow it yet. What with it being all the way out here in the Barrens. So who told you he was dead? Hmm, let's see. Sam's dig I'm not gonna tell him about the money. He might want to cut. Sam's digital digital ghost. When his start stopped, I got sent a recorded message asking me to bring his killer to justice. Guess he had a hunch. The dwarf raises his eyebrows, a smile wiping the suspicion from his face. A dead man switch, eh? Fascinating. I was working on him earlier. He's over there. Over here. Yeah. Called it. Poor Sam. So what can you tell me? He's my second Emerald City Ripper victim. The third was downtown. Ripper, huh? I guess the classics never got out of style. He sighs. Not my title. That's what the Seattle press insists on calling the killer. All I know is that like the original Jack, our Ripper knows how to handle a scalpel. But this one's even more twisted. He or she always removes an internal organ from the victim. Oh, a trophy hunter. I'm not gonna say delicious. What prize did the Ripper take from Sam? What's his liver was cleanly cut out? What about the other lucky contestants? The first victim's heart was missing, and the third has had a spleen removed. McCluskey? He looks quite unpleasant. Dresden, get out here! Let's uh, investigate him. I'm here about the new Ripper Vic, Sam Watts. Check. Do you have anything? Sam's body have, is half covered by a sterile surgical sheet. His face an ashen white. For the first time without a smirk on it. Below the chest there is a small pencil thin incision covered in dried blood. Beyond that, the corpse is immaculate. It would seem that the killer knew exactly what they wanted from him and took it. Next to Sam are several plastic envelopes containing the evidence found on his body. You can examine evidence through the bag without spoiling it. Alright, what looks interesting here? Handwritten note. You can only see part of the note, given the torn off bits and bloodstains. Sam, I feel terrible that we arg... argued? We have been long to say I'm sorry see you there love Jessica what about this business card moving things around you can make out that it's a place from a a card from a place called the seamstresses union there is something handwritten on the back but blood has made it an illegible a cred stick it's a standard cheap unsecured cred stick no way of knowing what's on it without slotting it should I take it Mm, yeah, that's right. You slot the cred stick into your PDA. 300... That's a yen sign. I forgot the... Uh... 
currency is added to your account. Look at the purple shirt. It's Sam's shirt. Several of the buttons are missing, and blood has thoroughly soaked it. The bag sloshes a bit in your hand. Put down evidence bag. Alright, what's in here? Basic medkit. That's useful. Nothing here. Let's go talk to McCluskey here. Towering over the diminutive corner is a homicide detective right out of central case casting. If you ignore the tusks, pointed ears, and the Neanderthal brow, you can smell. And you can smell his cheap aftershave from a mile away. So this new Ripper Vic was name's familiar. Didn't his mother kill herself a while back? The coroner frowns. So you insisted at the time. He chortles. Come on, she offed herself. I had it on very good authority. Now let's go, Dresden. Give me something to work with there. This Ripper case is my ticket to a lieutenant's badge. I've already posted everything I know. The killer stuns the targets with a combination of drugs and magic, then removes a single internal organ while they're still alive. That's gnarly. The perpetrator is most likely right-handed, with a slim head that knows its way around the scalpel. Has a decent understanding of human and metahuman anatomy too. So, I'm lo looking for a whacked out surgeon. Not necessarily. I don't know any surgeons who still use scalpels anymore. These days, it's all done with computer-controlled lasers. Could be anyone from a military field surgeon to an antique medicine aficionado. You're no damn help, dwarf. The Lone Star Detective finally notices you. You know his superhuman powers of observation. Who the hell are you? So I could intimidate him if I had more strength, but I don't. Let's see. Are you the detective on this case? I was hired by Sam Watts to assist you in finding his killer. The dreck you were. You get nowhere near my investigation and it will be you on the slab, human. He looks back at the dwarf. Dresden, get me more. I'm putting someone in a cell or box this week and claiming my promotion. Hmm, he's gonna be trouble, I can tell. Alright, is there anything else around here? Before I talk to Dresden. Can I hack his computer? No. What about in here? A door. But I can't open it. Alright, Dresden. Are we gonna talk crap about the detective? Dresden looks amused. Do you always make friends? Do you always make friends that easily? Um, I'm great at dinner parties too. He cocks his head to one side. Be straight with me. You really gonna work for the dead man? Let's see. Sam was there when I needed him. I'm going to return the favor. Fascinating again. Detective McCluskey isn't interested in anything but Detective McCluskey. He'd convict his own mother if it meant another 10 new yen a week in his paycheck. Plus he's on a take. Dresden pauses, considering. You have honor after a fashion. I try to honor the dead in my work, so we have that in common. What can I do to help you? On the take? Who's paying to hold his leash? I don't know, but someone with some major pull has been looking out for McCluskey's career and wallet. What was that McCluskey said about Sam's mother? The official report is that she committed suicide about a year ago. Sounds like you disagreed, disagreed with the findings. My name's on the report, but my actual findings left some doubts. I can't say that it wasn't suicide. But there were some unusual bruises on her upper arms, and she didn't use her dominant hand to pull the trigger. I was told to drop it, so I dropped it. Interesting. What are organs worth, worth these days? A wholehearted body can be worth a bunch of Nuyen, but individual organs, organs, not worth as much anymore. What with all the synth and cyber stuff on the market these days? Organ grinders only deal in the recently deceased. There's plenty of other shop shops that aren't as picky though, and they don't care where the bodies come from either. Who still uses scalpels? Doctors still learn how to use them in their first year of medical school, as do coroners, but neither profession uses them much anymore. It's possible that some of the slime and shop shops still use scalpels, I suppose, I suppose, but I wouldn't know where to look. 
Have you heard of the Seamstresses Union? It's a nearby club in the Barrens that attracts low lives. You'd probably like it. Me, I'm not really the going out type. Always too much to be done around here. Plus, the dead are just easier to get along with. I just need to know one more thing. Where was Sam killed? Karma gained. Nice. Tristan looks up at you intently for a moment before spe speaking. You know, I might be able to do you one better. Why don't you poke around these those body lockers in the back and see if you find anything useful? Um, okay, I'll go do that. I'm guessing it means those. So what? Oh, over here. So what this does he want me to check out? The, oh, the cold storage drawer is labeled John Doe. But the internal thermostat is set to 21 degrees Celsius. Hmm. Open the drawer. The cold storage drawer opens to reveal the fully clothed body of a man, arms folded across his chest. In addition to sporting some of the brightest orange hair you have ever seen, the body seems to be in very good condition. Whoa, easy there. Jake Armitage. I think I've heard of him. In one quick move, he jumps down from the drawer and stands before you. For someone who just woke up in a morgue locker, he seems unfazed and pretty well put together. You spot a data jack drilled in his, into his temples and some shamanistic tattoos peeking above his collar. An interesting combination. I told John not to wake me up at 6 in the morning. Is it 6 yet? It doesn't feel like 6 yet. Um, you were just sleeping in a freezer. A freezer for dead people. Don't tell me you haven't considered it. Cheaper than a coffin hotel and the service is just as good. He chuckles. Well, so much for a good night's sleep. On the plus side, I noticed you haven't killed me yet, so that's good. If you aren't after me, then what's your story? I'm looking into the death of Sam Watts. The coroner seems to think you can help me out. Sam, eh? Glad somebody cares. We used to drink together every now and then, over at the Union. Decent enough guy. Always in trouble over something or another, though. Jake, J Jake yells toward the other side of the room. John, is this guy cool? Yeah, he's on the level. Working for Sam, believe it or not. Some sort of dead man switch. I thought you could help him out. Maybe even stop moping around the shop all day. Thanks for volunteering me, he pauses. Might be sizing you up, but it's all to tell be behind, the, behind those shades. Alright then, the name's Jake, and you are? Nice to meet you, Jake. I'm Cart. And well-mannered, too. Such a rare thing in the city. Well, it looks like, it sounds like you're taking a dive into the deep end here. John's right. I might be able to help you out. I was with Sam the other night, the night of the murder. Poor guy. He was hanging out at the seamstresses union that night, tripped out and rowdy. I'd been laying low there for a few days after a bad run. Mrs. Kubota asked me to throw Sam out, so I did. But out in the alley, some gangsters got to jump on me. He winces. Damn. Maybe I need some soy calf after all. John, could you gra grab me a cup? Get your own damn cup. My hands are dirty anyway. Now what's wrong with this intestine? You hear a loud squelching sound as Dresden continues his work. Ew. Thanks, Jan. You're a real pal. Anyway, there's a big fat corp bounty on my head. Like I said, my last job didn't exactly go according to plan. Out in the alley, a few Halloweeners got to jump on us. Damn gangsters thought they could turn a quick profit off of my head. Jake smiles, and you get the impression that didn't work out so well for the gangsters. Sam stumbled off during the fight though, and that's the last I saw of him. Until he turned up here dead on, the, dead on arrival. Reminds me of my last day in this place. Do you know anything else? I know they found his body a block away from the Union, just lying there in broad daylight. That's the Barons for you. Jake backs down, his expression matched by chrome and crimson glasses. Shame though, wish I'd been there, if those slagging gangsters hadn't come along. Tell you what, you look like you can handle yourself in a fight. I could use some backup to settle the score with those Halloweeners out there. Their leader, their leaders got the whole gang searching the barons for me. I need to get rid of that asshole. In return, I'll take you to the place Sam was murdered. It's not safe to hit these streets alone at night, trust me. Jake eyes you up and down. 
And maybe I'll throw in some decent supplies while we're at it. What do you say? Hmm... I do like a bit of street justice every now and then. Alright, Jake, count me in. Great. I've been hiding out here ever since that run-in with those Halloweeners. Why a bunch of gangers? But this stretch of the barrens is their turf. Hell, I'm surprised you even made it to this morgue in one piece without packing some heat. He yells over his shoulder. Very funny, Jake. You can sleep in the dumpster tomorrow. So, do you need a weapon? Oh, I like to keep my distance. Got a rifle? You don't like library windows, do you? Never mind. Here's a rifle you can borrow. That's weird. So, ready for an evening out on the town? Hmm. Just a minute, tell me some more about these gangers first. Well, they're one of the nastier gangs in town. Their symbol is a flaming jack-o'-lantern. But you wouldn't like their version of trick-or-treating very much. Around here, they're led by a troll named John Paul. He's got all the Halloweeners in the barrens looking for me. If we take him out, maybe I can breathe a bit easier. I'm ready. I'll follow your lead. Those Halloweeners aren't looking for you, yet. We can leave whenever you're ready. I noticed these. Let's check them out. Basic trauma kit. And basic med kit. See if there's anything else that lights up. How do I get back there? Maybe the door is open now? Back here? Doesn't look like it. Alright, I'm guessing I'm going back here. And we should be able to check out the traveling system. Head out into the barrens? Confirm. Run into Seattle Sprawl and sooner or later you'll find yourself in the Redmond Barrens. It doesn't matter your business, the Barrens doesn't like you. Take one part radioactive wasteland, three parts doggy dog slum, add a dash of tourist trap and you got a recipe for mean as hell. You leave the sanitized death and formaldehyde of organ grinders behind, entering the anarchy and desperation on the streets. Jake stops a moment to breathe deeply, filling his lungs with motorcycle exhaust. Radioactive dust, chordite, and who knows what else. He exhales with an expression of wry contentment. The strength, the stench, and grime tell me he's home. Awesome, we've found a companion, and we got a new weapon. Let's try to equip that. And I haven't shown you this screen yet. This is the stat screen, and this is my inventory. It seems my new AK-97 got auto-equipped. That's awesome. And I got two karma to spend. Let's check that out. But I don't think I want to spend it. No. I'm gonna save up for some new upgrades later on. If you like the series, hit that like button and maybe leave a comment or two. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys next time.